When people say they're angry and they want to vote to restore some facsimile of America's past, does anyone else get deja vu? It's German for deja vu, by the way. Hey, subjects and subjugators, you probably recognize me, your friendly neighborhood Trace. According to the traditions and doctrines of the United States of America, governments should exist for the people and be run by the people. But sometimes, along the regular legal path of democracy, people elect authoritarian heads of state. Authoritarians are those who favor enforcing and strict obedience to authority, especially that of the government, at the expense of personal freedom. It's pretty obvious when one is around and is related to words like dictator, despot, draconian, or tyrant. But why would anyone elect an authoritarian government? Aren't we masses yearning to be free? In the 40s, political scientists began analyzing authoritarian regimes to better understand their rise. Researcher Eric Fromm hypothesized people's authoritarian voting stems from feelings of insecurity. Hitler was elected in part because of German fear of communism, and according to researchers, when people are faced with an uncertain world and lack of direction, they will escape from freedom into security. In 1959, in the American Sociological Review, a paper claims the working class are the main drivers of democratic authoritarianism. Researchers suggest authoritarianism can arise not just out of political fear, but also from a rapid rise of societal pluralism and threatened economic interests. For example, the rise of ethnic minorities, more sexual or social freedom, or the challenging of some status quo can all cause authoritarian attitudes to grow. But that's not all. The authors of the book Psychology of Terrorism say terrorism can succeed by destabilizing the populace through fear. In a democracy, the people drive the political machine, and if they are fearing for their security, the overall democracy can become vulnerable. Essentially, if a group of people feel their economic stability is in jeopardy, their safety is threatened in some way, or their country is no longer their own for some reason, then they may vote for an authoritarian regime who they believe can restore uniformity and security and punish difference. In the last 70 years, communication researchers have crafted what's called authoritarian personality theory to suss out who these voters may be. They've found some are predisposed to support without question a candidate who they believe is a strong, decisive, authoritative leader. Psychologists think this may be more common in right-wing politics, but have to be careful not to skew their research with the wrong questions. They can't simply ask if a voter will follow orders without question or if they dislike certain groups. Instead, they'll ask if obedience is a virtue or if people can be divided into two classes, the strong and the weak. What they found is authoritarian personalities tend to be those raised from childhood to value conforming. They believe in obedience to people higher up in social status than themselves and defame and mistrust those below them. The social psychology of politics reads, quote, authoritarians believe obedience to authority is the only morally approvable position. Then they'd apply that opinion across their life, from work to child rearing to politics and government. So when people raised in this way go to the polls, they may likely vote for someone who mimics this decisive, derisive, and class-driven worldview. If, due to fear, some voters were to choose an authoritarian leader, there's no guarantee that that form of government would resolve those fears. And if voters did do that, with free and legal elections and a supportive Congress, there is really nothing anyone could do to stop them. As conservative Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. said in 1920, if my fellow citizens want to go to hell, I'll help them. It's my job. So now that you know how the people vote them in, Test Tube News explains how elected dictators have been able to hold on to power after their terms were up. Check that out right here. Well, in the case of Uganda, Museveni was not originally voted into presidency. In 1986, after years of competing government factions and coups, Museveni's faction overthrew the capital and instituted him as president. If you want to align what's going on in your world with what's going on in our world, sign up for the Test Tube newsletter. We send you our best videos about science, humanity, and politics all around the world a few times a week. How do you guys feel about authoritarian leaders? Can you see this happening in real life? I mean, I don't really know if I have to ask that. You probably are already down in the comments talking about it, but if you haven't, go down there and talk about it. Also, make sure you subscribe while you're there. Thanks for tuning in.